So should we buy or sell the TIPS ETF? First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then go ahead and do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. TIPS is 0.53% away from the 52-week low, but approaching 8% away from the highs, which is pretty substantial in uh, the bond market. So, TIP tracks a market value weighted index of US Treasury inflation protected securities with at least one year remaining in maturity. So let's just jump right into the charts here, like that, like that. So the key event we do have is that the red 200 week moving average, it has been important for a long period. This is back here in 2009 during the big, big bear market, clear surgical resistance. Then we see it becomes support here. It was a fantastic time to buy. Here, clear resistance, surgical resistance, support, support, becomes resistance, support. And as you can see, right here and right now, we are testing that super important moving average, historically speaking. And because we are talking about a moving average that has a track record of working out, for the bulls and the bears, then we can make a pretty strong assumption that this is a technical indicator that the key participants in the TIPS bond ETF market look at. If we look at this as an example here, this week, this, this interaction is almost surgical. So that, that, that is just something to go through when reviewing, uh, you know, investing opportunities. Whenever you see a technical indicator that gives you an interesting message, always look back uh, in the past, you know, to see, to see whether it has a track record of working out or not, because you could easily have like a 200 week moving average uh, support, but then you look, uh, look back and you might see that, you know, it usually is sliced and diced. Uh, in terms of this here, um, what happened in the bond market was so extreme uh, during early 2020 that um, it actually is, uh, it increases the legitimacy of the 200 week that we did actually close uh, towards it, even though we did certainly go far lower intra week. But you know, those days were just ridiculously extreme in the bond market. So yeah, primary assumption is that the 200 week moving average will be used by the bulls as a support level. In terms of the daily data points, then we are below all kinds of moving averages. Um, now you could make some case, I'm not, I don't really agree, but you could quarrel that this could be a bit double bottom-ish. Uh, but it's not a clean double bottom. Uh, when we look at these other technical indicators, like the RSI and uh, the PPO, it is inter interesting. Uh, if you look back here, uh, same level, uh, we did at least get a bounce. Um, but, you know, during um, uh, this uh, period in 2018, uh, then we were oversold for a protracted period. But if you, if you did buy, you know, the low RSI then, it did eventually work out pretty well, but you would have to sit through some um, frustrating uh, periods. But yeah, the P P PPO and RSI, it has given some good signals in the past, and we are at, you know, that uh, historical buy level on the weeklies. On the daily, uh, then we have already seen a bit of a bounce here. But not enough uh, in terms of follow through. So that is very important. Uh, you want um, a bounce, but ideally, of course, you want uh, it to become a longer term move. 
uh, because you know being continually on the lookout for new opportunities um, that takes a lot of time uh, but sometimes uh, the market is just uh, like that uh, it uh, will only give you a few bounces or a few short-term bearish opportunities uh, of course i am fully aware of all of the, of the narratives uh, around why uh, the bond market is supposed uh, to go much lower uh, but it's very important to be aware of the fact that the market is forward looking what we saw here on this ETF is not what the market thinks thinks today. Okay, this this is some guesstimate about uh, the future. So in terms of the line in the sand, two hundred weekly moving average su support. That is the key level. So I do think I will give uh, yeah I give the bulls a four. Uh, next we will look at seasonality. Looking here uh, to the right, uh, the seasonality over the last 5, uh, 10 and uh, 7 years here in blue. Overall it is bullish. Uh, bullish extending into June, July-ish. Uh, to the left, over the last 5 years, uh, May and June are very good. You know, it closes higher 100% of uh, the time. Uh, that it literally can't get better over the last 10 years. Then all of a sudden we do see that um, uh, May, you know, the coming month, only closes higher 56% of the time. Uh, June and July are, however, uh, even better. Then big picture. Last... Well, let's get 20 years like that. Then going from April to May, uh, we, we go to one of the strongest months for the TIP ETF. Closest higher is 72% of the time. June, July, August are also very good. So basically, the coming months are very favorable to the bulls. Given that, uh, I think I will have to give the bulls a 6. Uh, the seasonality is uh, what it is, and uh, it is bullish. Let's compare the BNDX, which is the total international bond ETF, with the tips. Uh, so when we go here and look at uh, performance, uh, year to date, um, you see that the BNDX has lost 7.25%. And then 4.40 for the tips. Yeah, both of these are pretty big numbers for bond market uh, ETFs. Uh, in terms of the dividend yield, 3.86% uh, here for the tips ETF. And that obviously is much, much uh, better than the meager 1.12% you get from the BNDX. Uh, Looking at the holdings... Uh, the BNDX is uh, unsurprisingly a lot more diversified, while the, t the tips is you know pretty you know specialized. Uh, so uh, yeah, here is the data we get. And we unfortunately do not get any kind of coupon breakdown, and this is one of those weaknesses with ETF database is that they do have you know these tables for coupons but i i almost never see uh, um data here also very important you know credit quality but this is also something i almost never get any metrics for so in terms of the fundamentals the most important thing for you know people who look at you know the bond market uh, that is definitively the yield. So yeah, I, I, I will give this one to the bulls. I think I give the bulls a 5. Uh, this is good yield. Now let's look at some correlations. Long term is 79% with S&P 500. Minus 6% with the BNDX, you know, total bond market ETF. Then minus 36% with the 10 year yield minus 66% with the dollar index, daily data points, 44% positive with uh, S&P 500, 87% with BNDX, 
minus 88% with the 10 year yield. So that was strongly a negative. Now looking historically here at that correlation, we are at you know, the low end of uh, the range. In terms of the dollar index, minus 68% negative. Uh, looking long and uh, short term, certain, certainly seems like you know the, the 10 year yield uh, has the biggest uh, effect. So let's look at you know the 10 year yield. Here we have it. Yeah, so there, it's we have seen an absolutely huge move here in the 10 year yield. So yeah, uh, massive. So let's actually look a bit uh, historically at uh, the move. So looking here at you know, RSI, we are at a, the extreme end of the range. Also looking here at you know the MACD, PPOs. Uh, the move is uh, quite uh, unprecedented. Uh, looking at you know, the daily data points, also in a very excessive uh, move. A lot in a very short time. So when you look at a chart like this, then it is a truism that we have an uptrend. But the most important thing to ask yourself is what is most likely to happen next? Because that is the that is the where you know the money is made. And we do see that looking at you know the weekly data points that we are very high. Uh, could we go higher? Yeah, of course we could. However, we do have literally decades of data in front of us. This is real numbers, real data. Given that, from a purely technical standpoint, there's very good reason to expect at least some kind of pullback. Uh, a very key point of... Uh, uh, that has a lot of merit. Uh, it's that historical uh, price action is more informative than the most recent price action. Because let's use this as an example. If you look at this, it looks like you, an uptrend. You know, it looks very, very bullish. Uh, but that is a truism. This was a very bad time to turn bullish. Here, as an example, this obviously looks bearish. Like if I just uh, draw it uh, in, it's very hard to not call this a downtrend. That is a fact. But then you have to ask yourself the question, what is most likely to happen next? Are we going to see the mother of all downtrends? Or is there a higher probability that we are going to see either a bounce or a more substantial mean reversion. Well, what we did see is definitively that. So, so it's just very important to think always of the historical uh, dynamic between price and various you know, technical indicators and patterns. So here we have the tips with the 10 year yield. You could make a case that we are at a key support level. So let me draw that in. So this is a um, zone, I guess, uh, where we many times in the past have seen lows form, meaning that tips have started to outperform the 10 year yield. Something to consider. Obviously, we do currently have a downtrend in this relationship. That is a fact. But that doesn't doesn't mean that uh, it will continue. That is, you know, to be determined. Uh, looking here at the seasonality data, uh, the seasonality data, however, suggests quite firmly that it could continue. There could be more downside in this uh, pair. And now let's look at. Uh, I think I, we will look at the BNDX against the WT. So now I am looking at you know the total stock market ETF against uh, the total bond market ETF. So when you see uh, as an example this move here, like this move, it it means 
that the bond market outperformed the stock market. While during this period, the bond market underperformed the stock market. So in that period, it was better to be invested in, in stocks than bonds. What is a bit interesting here is that we recently see the formation. Okay, let's remove that. Uh, this looks a bit rounding bottom-ish. Potentially a very interesting bullish development. Obviously, it still is to be determined, but uh, it's a very clear trend change from here, where the bears are very strongly in control, but recently the bulls have been fighting. Bounce, 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 bounce. That is uh, the type of, of price action that we see when when forms are beginning uh, to recruit more and more bulls, and that is how uh, you know, lows are are formed. Okay, so here we have daily data points. Um, yeah, the seasonality here is bearish. So bonds tend to underperform uh, the stock market heading towards later August. Uh, I think I will give this one yeah, a bit to the bulls. So we end up with a score here of 4.3. The key part of this bullish thesis is that 200 weekly moving average support, it should Given all the data we have looked at, it should hold. If the bulls are not able to use such an obvious helping level, then uh, the bulls uh, are very weak. Whatever you do, of course, uh, you want to uh, have stops uh, locked and loaded, be market neutral, and get VIP access.